Welcome core kids. This is our first online lesson. Pretty cool, huh? So I am Miss Anastasia and I'm super excited to be with you. We have been doing a lot of new things since we started in January with our Jesus Storybook Bible curriculum. Um, we kind of renamed ourselves. We um, went from Rock Point Kids to now Core Kids and we've been discussing that and what that means for us. Um, whether that's a church family at Meridian Point or church family at Hills, we have some, um, just really some goals in the kids' ministry. So we want to share a little bit about that with you. We're going to do a few announcements, and then we're going to jump right into our lesson, okay? All right. So on the board here, you can see my C-O-R-E. Together, both of our church families meet at our core Christian community center. Well, what does that core mean? Sometimes you kiddos come up with the best ideas. I know I've had fun with the Meridian Point kids, but figuring out what the C and the O and the R and the E mean. But for time today, Ms. Anastasia is just going to give you all the answers, okay? Kind of like the cheat sheet. So for our C, that is our corporate worship. Corporate worship, friends, is when we come together to worship together. That is probably the hardest part of this video because we're not all together. What I love, though, is that you get to be in your homes with your family. Some of you are able to grab some friends as well. Um, what that just means, friends, is we come together however we can to worship God, to learn about Him, to encourage each other. That is what the church does. It's, what's, it's done from the very beginning. They would meet together, and they would study the scriptures together, and they would worship God together. They would grow in their relationship with God together with others. So that, that's what our C means. Our O is others focused. So this is where we don't just get together for us. We then begin to serve outside of ourselves, to serve others. As a core Christian community, we've done that in many different ways. One of the ways is Life Network. We as a, as a two church families support Life Network and them um, helping new moms and new dads and new babies. Another way is there are church plants um, or church organizations in Honduras. And we have that opportunity to help them even right now as they are also kind of being told to stay inside that we can support them. So that is us as two church families being others focused. R is relationships. We also build relationships in many different ways. Right now, we're using our computers a whole lot to do so. But we do that when we have, when we're all together on a Sunday morning. We do that before we start class and after we start class. We, we do that when we get together in life groups. Um, we're going to develop relationships by sending each other cards and texts and phone calls and FaceTime. We're going to do it however we can. But this is big. This is big. E is education. And that is what we're going to do this morning as we dive into the Jesus Storybook Bible. We're going to have us some education time. And we get that when we do equip groups. You guys have that fun time with Miss Monica usually on Sunday afternoons with equip kids. That's your education time too. It's fun, but it's educational. We get to learn God's word when we memorize scripture together. That's our education. What we believe as Meridian Point Church and as Hills Christian Church, so as the core Christian community, when we do these four things, we are growing in our relationship with God. And that is our heart's desire, kiddos. We want you to grow in your relationship with God. So then as a kids ministry, as core kids, we've been talking about our three L's, okay? So we have our lead. That's where we do our education, our teaching. And this year, that's our Jesus Storybook Bible. And you can see up here on our slide, what that looks like. And then we have our lift. This is where we disciple you guys, where we take what we have learned and we learn to walk it out. So one of the ways we do that as a core Christian community is we provide Eagle Lake Camp on location. And guys, let me tell you, they contacted me yesterday and we are still on for June 29th through, the, through July the 3rd. Our camp is still ready to go. We're super excited. Keep telling your friends. I know that this is a hard time, 
and know that not many people are thinking about camp. So if you can't tell a friend right now, if it's just not the time, be praying about it. Praying about those who you're going to invite. Praying about our week of camp. We are so excited, all right? If you have any questions, mom and dad can always contact Miss Anastasia. So real quick, we're going to watch a video on Eagle Lake. one of my favorite ones too and this is why this is where you guys get to take what you've learned now you're learning to live it out so now you go and do it you serve this um this year we're kind of doing something with operation christmas child have you guys heard about that i hope so if you haven't um an idea behind that is we're going to do shoe boxes we're going to fill those up and uh, we're gonna have a packing party in November where we bring all of our donations that we brought in throughout the year. So we're doing highlighting a different item every month and we're gonna come together and we're gonna pack those shoe boxes and we're gonna send them out um, to kiddos who don't get a lot for Christmas and try to bring them a bit of that hope, a bit of that joy that you guys get to experience with your families. So. So as you saw for the month of March, we're highlighting quality crafts that you can pick up at Hobby Lobby or maybe um, and mom runs into Walmart. Maybe there's a couple there that she can grab. Um, or, but quality crafts is just an idea. You can pick up anything at any time. I know that I was at Walmart recently and they had their gloves and hats on sale for like 75 cents. So Miss Anastasia grabbed some of those. And that's not even highlighted this month. All we're trying to do is to add a little bit each month to our stock so that when it time, comes time for that packing party, we have plenty of gifts to pack our boxes with. Okay? All right, friends, now we're gonna get ready to start our lesson. All right, guys, we have been talking about God's love, His grace, and His forgiveness. We have seen that we are all sinners and we all need Jesus to rescue us. We also memorized a verse about how Jesus carried out that rescue. So let's say it together, okay? Mark 8, 31 says, The Son of Man must be killed and after three days rise again. In that verse, Jesus tells his disciples about his death. Remember, we talked about how we are on a journey to the cross right now. We are leading up to that time that we as Christians celebrate every year. All right? But it took some time to get there, and it also took a lot of pain and some sorrow. Jesus knows he knew he was going to be killed, and it was part of the, his rescue plan. In our story today, Jesus explains more about his death and this rescue plan. The Servant King It was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Every year, they killed a lamb and ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. Can we say that together? The lamb died instead of us. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in an upstairs room. But Jesus' friends were arguing. 
About what? They were arguing about stinky feet. Stinky feet? Yes, that's right. Stinky feet. Now, the thing about feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound unusual, except that the streets in those days were dirty. And I don't mean just dusty dirty. I mean really stinky dirty. With all those cows and horses everywhere, you can imagine the stuff on the street that ended up on their feet. So anyway, someone had to wash away the dirt, but it was a dreadful job. Who on earth would ever dream of volunteering to do it? Only the lowliest servant. I'm not the servant, Peter said. Nor am I, said Matthew. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, picked up a basin of water, knelt down, and started to wash his friend's feet. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand about Jesus being the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Peter, Jesus said, you cannot be close to me. Jesus knew that what people needed most was to be clean on the inside. All the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, Peter said, tears filling his eyes, all of me. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I am doing this because I love you, Jesus explained. Do this for each other. Now, one of Jesus' friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what that bad plan was, but Jesus knew. And so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Judas. Jesus said, and Judas got up from the meal, left the room, and walked out into the night. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. He picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. My body is like this bread. It will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood. It will pour out. But this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart and your hearts will be healed. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins, and you'll be clean on the inside, in your hearts. So whenever you eat and drink, remember, Jesus said, I've rescued you. Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and go back to God. I won't be with you long, he said. You're going to be very sad, but God's helper will come. And then you'll be filled up with a forever happiness that won't ever leave. So don't be afraid. You are my friends, and I love you. Then they sang their favorite song and walked up to their favorite place, an olive garden. All right, friends, so now we're going to review that story so that we remember it. All right, so we're going to hide these words in our heart, and we're going to put it in our minds, and we're going to go over it so that we really remember. Okay, so we're going to begin with what do we know about Jesus' death from? We have four different boxes, and we're going to begin with feet washing. 
So Jesus knelt down and washed his disciples' feet. Teachers do not wash disciples' feet. It's the servant's job. Kings do not wash anyone's feet. Then why did Jesus do this? Do we know? It is because he is the servant king. All right, so we are going to write servant in our box. Before I go any further, if you would like to go grab a piece of paper and make it look like Miss Anastasia's, feel free. All right, I'll count to 10. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Still waiting. One, two, three, four, five. All right, if you need to pause me to go finish getting stuff, that's perfectly fine and get caught up, okay? We're gonna carry on, here we go. So what do we know about Jesus' death from feet washing? Well, he, we know that he is the servant king, all right? And from that, we are now gonna draw a crown. Oh, Miss Anastasia's not great, but here we go. We go. We'll put some jewels in his crown. All right. I'd love it if you guys would post or have mom send pictures so that we can see how well you draw that. All right. Next, what do we know about Jesus's death from 30 pieces of silver? Well, one of Jesus's disciples was going to help the leaders capture Jesus. Do we know his name? Do we remember? Oh, here we go. Judas, oh dear. And what was his price? Kind of gave you a hint, 30 pieces of silver. So we're gonna take some time, ready? We're gonna draw. This can count as math also, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we have 30 pieces of silver. Feel free to color yours in and make it look so much better. All right? So what do we know about Jesus' death from the 30 pieces of silver? We know that Judas was going to use that. Um, he was going to receive that money to help the people, to help the leaders capture Jesus. All right, next part. What do we know about Jesus' death from Passover? It was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Do you guys remember that? Moses went and told Pharaoh we had all the plagues. And on the last one, Moses said, here's what you need to do. You need to take a lamb. You need to kill it, and you need to put the blood on the doorpost, and then the angel of death is just going to pass over you. Kind of, eh, but that is how, that was God's plan, and it worked. It passed over his Israelites, and they got out of Egypt safely. So, that was God's rescue plan for the Israelites. We're going to write the word rescue. Every year they killed a lamb then, and they ate it, and they would say, the lamb died instead of me. Because God had told them, don't forget, you remember. So they celebrated Passover every year. So now let's say that together. Ready, friends? The lamb died instead of me. Let's say it two more times together. The lamb died instead of me. One more time. The, the lamb, lamb died, died instead, instead of, of me. me. Now... We're going to try and draw some lambs. Oh, my goodness. You guys are going to do so much better. That, I'm sure. I think they're kind of fluffy. Woo, kind of looks like a turtle head. Sorry. And, oh, dear. There you go. That's the best I can do. We got a lamb. Try and do another one. Oh, 
give him some ears. There we go. All right, there we go. A couple lambs for you. All right, what do we know then about Jesus' death from Passover? We know that Jesus, the lamb, died instead of us. Now, finally, what do we know about Jesus' death from the Last Supper? Jesus had told them to do this in remembrance of me. Do you know, um, sorry, when was Jesus' body broken? Do we remember? On the cross. So we... We're going to draw a cross. And beside it, we're going to write what Jesus said. This is my body. Jesus picked up a cup of wine and he said, This cup of wine is like my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. When was Jesus' blood poured out? Remember? On the cross. So now, we are going to write that Jesus said, This is my blood. And now we are going to draw pieces of bread in the cup. Maybe I can do this in a little bit better than those sheep. Here we go. So bread, let's see, maybe a loaf of bread and then a cup. All right. And once again, we remember Jesus' body was broken and his blood was poured out on the cross. Jesus is our servant king. And the Passover lamb, remember, Jesus died instead of us. The lamb died instead of us. He knew that he would have to die to rescue us. His body was broken and his blood was poured out on the cross so that we could be saved. So what is it that we discovered about Jesus today? I'd like you to take some time and think about that. I know that we, we discovered these different things about Jesus' death. And I want you to think back to the story when he got up and he washed his disciples' feet. What does that make you think about Jesus? What kind of person was he then? Because whatever he was then on earth is who he still is now. Spend some time thinking about that. Talk about that with your parents. Then, my friends, we're going to pray about that. Let's thank God that Jesus' body was broken and that his blood was poured out on the cross so that we could be saved. Thank him for your salvation, friends. Thank him that he rescued you. Thank God that Jesus is the servant king and the Passover lamb who died in our place and rescued us. We can never thank him enough, ever, ever. This would be an awesome time for you to tell your parents maybe what your favorite worship song is and sing it together. Finally, let's go over that memory verse one more time. All right, here we go. The, the son, son of man, man must, must be killed. killed. And after three days, rise again. Mark 8, 31. All right, core kids. So happy to have been here with you today. Thanks for being patient with us and very flexible. Um, I can't wait till myself or one of your teachers gets an opportunity just to give you a big hug. Until then, give your parents a hug. And if you're really cool, give your siblings a hug too. All right? And we will see you back next time.